Have you ever witnessed a situation in the past where you wanted to refuse to perform a given task while being in the shoes of the protagonist? I bet you have. The developers are quite willing to generate such moments to provide us with a solid dose of emotions, or make us reflect on whether we are doing the right thing. Moreover, another strong reason is to draw the player's attention to what is happening in the game's storyline. You know, these are typical moments created to stir things up a bit, to give us the impression, oh shit, what's going on? Oh, hey there, Trevor. <laughs> it must also be admitted that it is very effective, especially in moments when the game's story slows down significantly and when there is a greater chance that we may get bored with the game. A good example can be found in the mission Waka Gashira Wipeout in GTA 3. As you probably know, Claude accepts a task from a politician, Donald Love, the main goal of which is to murder the Yakuza Waka Gashira, Kenji Kasen. Kenji is Asuka's brother. A woman who had helped the game's protagonist sometime earlier took him under her wing. As a sign of gratitude and loyalty, Claude also completed some important missions for her. The relationship between Yakuza and Claude seemed to be quite good. It guaranteed many benefits for both parties. So why did Claude decide to jeopardize his well-established relationship with the Yakuza when danger lurked around every corner in the city? Yes, Claude carried out this job undercover in the cartel cruiser belonging to the Colombians, who in turn were his arch enemies. In theory, the chance of finding out about Claude was slim, but was it for sure? There were many Yakuza members at the scene, and Claude's car, from which he carried out the attack, did not even have tinted windows. So the action wasn't that well thought out, and the risk was quite high. It is also worth mentioning that Claude had beef with all organizations in the city at that time. It was therefore an action that could have had horrible consequences for Claude. You don't betray such a powerful ally unless you have an ace up your sleeve, not even to mention the fact that another strong gang would be added to the pool of the main character's enemies, headed by the sister of the victim, who wants revenge. So taking all this into account, let's try to figure out what Claude was trying to achieve. Why did he act this way? Why didn't he refuse to assassinate Kenji Kasen, who was a major guy in the ranks of the Yakuza and Asuka's brother on top of that? The first reason why Claude didn't refuse to kill Kenji may have been because he didn't like the way Kenji was treating him. Kenji was downright dismissive towards Claude at times. A great example is the Kanbu Bust Out mission. Kenji tells Claude straightforwardly that he doesn't have much hope for him since Claude is not of Japanese descent. As a result, he makes it clear that Claude will always be nothing more than an errand boy in the Yakuza ranks. My sister speaks highly of you, though I'm yet to be convinced that a guy Jin can offer anything but disappointment. In turn, we witness another unpleasant behavior by Kenji towards Claude in the mission Smackdown. Just in case you don't know the background of this mission, in a mission called Deal Steel, Kenji learned that the Colombian cartel was planning to ally with the Uptown Yardies, despite messages from the Yakuza that the cartel shouldn't play dirty with them and leave alone the Yakuza's interests in Liberty City. The protagonist's task was to go to the meeting place between Colombians and Jamaicans and kill everyone involved in this meeting. A little later, in the SmackDown mission, it turns out that despite sabotaging the meeting, the Colombians found a way to reach an agreement with the Uptown Yardies. For some completely unknown reason, Kenji blames Claude for this. He tells him off and considers him worthless. You. How fitting you should choose this moment to show your worthless faith. It would appear your attempts to dissuade the Jamaicans from becoming bedfellows with the cartel were wholly inadequate. Yardi pushes line Liberty Street, selling packets of spank like they were selling hot dogs. Those cartel pigs are laughing at us, at me. But Claude did everything Kenji told him to do, right? He drove to the hospital in Rockford and interrupted the meeting. Even though he did everything as planned, he is the bad guy here. Even assuming that we were not seeing something from behind the scenes and that it was actually Claude's fault, he had already completed several important tasks for the Yakuza. Therefore, it would seem that he deserved to make a mistake. Not everything always goes as it should, and making mistakes lies in human nature. It must be underlined that Claude was a good and very profitable associate. The Yakuza gained a lot from him, but mistakes do happen sometimes. To sum up this part, Claude may have treated Love's order as an opportunity for some kind of revenge. 
Claude may have seen this as an ideal opportunity to give the Japanese gangster payback, somewhat forgetting about his friendly relations with the Yakuza, especially since there was a good chance that no one would find out who was behind Kenji's murder, because the entire operation was carried out in secret. Besides, Claude had more reasons to accept the offer of assassinating Kenji. The other reasons were financial issues, and a good prospect guaranteed by Donald Love. Of course, if we look at it only in the context of the mission in which Claude kills Kenji, it doesn't sound too promising. Getting 30,000 bucks for killing one of the highest ranking Yakuza members in addition to the huge risk and difficulty itself is not worth your while. However, when we compare the payouts from all of Kenji's missions to Love's, the latter simply wins in this aspect. Apart from money, Love could also guarantee a better future for Claude. The protagonist knew, for example from Ray Machowski, that he was dealing with a very influential person. This information comes specifically from the Evidence Dash mission. I know a real important man in town, a soft touch with, uh, shall we say, exotic tastes and the money to indulge them. He's involved in a legal matter, and the prosecution has some rather embarrassing photos of him at a morgue party or something. So Claude knew that Donald was not a person to be denied. The consequences may be large, and all the benefits that come with knowing such a guy will be lost. It's very easy to prove this just by looking at what Claude does for a living. The man is a gangster, he has committed many serious crimes, and killed many people. If the police suddenly decided to go after him and bring the big guns, Donald could help Claude avoid serving time. But of course, this comes at a price. Doing everything love wants. Unlike the Yakuza, Donald Love could also protect Claude more effectively from criminal organizations that wanted to get him killed. Claude had beef with the Leones, the Colombians, the Triads, the Diablos, and the Jamaicans. The politician could offer Claude's enemies some kind of deal, an arrangement thanks to which all these gangs could become rich. So bearing in mind that the Yakuza didn't have anything like this to offer, they were also a competition for all these criminal organizations, so it's no wonder Claude agreed to all this without hesitation. After all, he saw great potential in love. Adding to this the fact that Claude was stabbed in the back many times by people like Catalina or Salvatore Leone, it could have made the protagonist lose the need to be loyal. Claude probably began to look only for himself, not only because of getting money, but because giving full trust to the criminal organization became irrelevant. Therefore, he considered Love as a person who would be more useful to him, so he did not refuse to accept the murder of the head of the organization, even though the organization was in good relations with Claude. Furthermore, Claude also knew that if he continued working with the Yakuza, he wouldn't get much in return. The reason he came to this conclusion is simply because of the earlier words said by Kenji, he doesn't have Japanese roots, so the only thing he can bring is disappointment at the very least. Even though he did everything Kenji asked him to do, the Yakuza Wakagashira treated him like garbage now and then. Going further, another reason that potentially led the main character to betray the Yakuza was his desire for revenge on Catalina. Claude knew that Love had influence and contacts, so he could count on the fact that if he did a good job for the politician, he would repay him and help him get Catalina. A similar situation even occurs in GTA 4. Nico carries out orders for a contact from United Liberty Paper, who after some time repays him by bringing Darko Brevich to the country. A man who has done a lot of harm to Nico in the past, and Nico desperately tries to find him throughout the storyline. Just like the United Liberty paper was crucial for Nico when it comes to dealing with Darko, Donald may be the only person who helps Claude deal with Catalina when the right moment comes. Hell, Claude attacks the cartel brutally already in the first mission for Donald Love, and this move is not in favor of Catalina, who now must be on guard even more. As a consequence, Claude gets to kill two birds with one stone, gain Donald's favor, and destroy Catalina's gang. Let us not forget that the very idea of the Waka Gashira wipeout mission was not to murder Kenji for the sake of murder itself. Donald wanted to lower real estate prices by starting a gang war between the Colombians and the Japanese. Even though one side of the conflict will emerge victorious, both parties will suffer huge losses in terms of their human resources. I know, it would seem that Claude was not looking to settle the scores with Catalina by any means necessary. 
After all, if he wanted to, he had a good opportunity to get rid of her both in the Cutting the Grass and Grand Theft Arrow missions. Both of these tasks were perfect occasions to kill Catalina. But despite everything, Claude did not carry out an attempt on the woman's life. During the game's story, the main character does not take any specific actions that could bring him closer to finding Catalina. Here again, we can refer to Nico and Darko Brevich, whom the protagonist was looking for and wanted to kill. Compared to Claude, Nico tried to use the connections he gained to get closer to achieving his goal, which he ultimately achieved. So, I will leave the question of whether Claude wanted to take revenge on Catalina or not for you to answer in the comments. In summary, Claude's decision to murder Kenji may seem wrong and immoral at first glance, and this is partly true. However, as you can see, many circumstances could in some way justify the man's disloyalty to the Yakuza, especially if we look at the benefits of cooperation with such an influential businessman as Donald Love. Kenji's bad treatment of Claude, more possibilities with Donald Love, good money, lack of trust and a better future, or the desire to get Catalina. All these arguments, maybe apart from the last one, seem to be crucial when it comes to Claude's final decision. Even though many people believe that Claude simply didn't think this through, the reality is slightly different. Yes, maybe Claude was carelessly following every single paid job, but if it weren't for the fact that Donald had disappeared in the end, the decision to take out Kenji Kassen could have been the right one. In the meantime, thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.